What's up everyone? In this video, we are going to be testing NVIDIA Inspector versus DLSS Swapper versus the NVIDIA app for forcing games to use the latest preset on DLSS 4. A couple things I want to cover. Please don't skip this part because it's really important. First of all, read my descriptions because if there are any updates or anything that I missed in the video because I'm not a good speaker, I always add it to the description or the pinned comment. So if somebody makes a really good comment that, that's helping people out, I'm going to pin it. If I figure something out after the fact, I'm going to pin it or add it to the description. Second, these DLSS 4 methods only work on games that have existing DLSS support. So you can't magically inject DLSS into games that don't already support it. Third, I think these three apps sort of have different use cases. So it's not really one versus another. It's more about how each one is going to affect each game. Now, I haven't done any pre-testing. This is going to be all live. So it's probably going to be a pretty long video live so i'm going to go ahead and cut it up uh, just know that everything's legit i have no affiliations with inspector swapper or nvidia whatsoever so all this testing is just in an attempt to figure out how things work and to figure out the best method on how to use the latest preset i've gone ahead and changed my desktop resolution to 1440p so everything should be legible on the screen i've had to edit some things in the past because i have an ultra wide display with a high resolution and people can't read things so i just went ahead and changed the whole resolution to 1440p it should be a lot easier to read without me having to edit, so everybody wins. The first app we're going to take a look at is the NVIDIA app, and that's because it's going to be really short-lived. Some people are saying, just use the NVIDIA app. It's the easiest way to force the latest preset. As you can see here, there are only 27 programs in my NVIDIA app. It doesn't matter if I refresh this. It doesn't matter if I add my library. This is my main Steam folder, so I can select that. And as you can see, no new programs are found over here. This is only going to show apps that are quote unquote whitelisted or supported by NVIDIA. Other than that, you're not going to get any other programs here. Maybe some random ones that show up for whatever reason, perhaps. And I'll test this for the sake of the video because I want to cover everything. So I'm going to go ahead and add a game that is not listed here to see if I can force it to be added via NVIDIA control panel. So I'm going to add Tokyo Extreme Racer. This game does support DLSS. It is not listed here because it's not whitelisted by NVIDIA or for whatever other reason that NVIDIA doesn't like to list it. So I've gone ahead and added it to my Manage 3D settings here. I'm going to apply that and let's restart the NVIDIA app to see if it's actually added onto the list here. All right, so we're back in the NVIDIA app and on the left here, we still have 27 programs. Tokyo Extreme Racer was not added. This app is completely worthless for forcing DLSS 4 in games that do not have DLSS 4 support. Again, games that have DLSS support, but not DLSS 4 support. It's, it's, not, it's not it. So even the games that are here, what you would do is, for example, Hogwarts Legacy. You can see here that it has DLSS overrides. You can go ahead and edit them and either force the latest overall or use specific ones. Yes, for this, it's great. For games that actually show up here, it's great. It's nice and easy. But not all games show up there. So that's the NVIDIA app. It's completely worthless for something like this. And we're going to move on. So as I mentioned before, NVIDIA Inspector has stock settings as far as DLSS goes. These are my regular NVIDIA control panel settings. So they have absolutely nothing to do with this. It's just G-Sync and V-Sync. And under common here for all these DLSS, these forced presets, everything is off or defaulted. So it's grayed out, everything's on default. So I'll go ahead and apply that too, just to, to be sure. Now we're gonna try several games by with just a DLSS file swap. So to do that, I'm going to use DLSS Swapper. And when you run DLSS Swapper, and this is another reason why using Inspector is better, there is a note for multiplayer games. While swapping DLSS versions should not be considered cheating, certain anti-cheat systems may not be happy with you if the files in your game directory are not what the game was distributed with. So by forcing DLSS 4 with the latest preset in Inspector, you're not touching any of the game's files. You're doing it on a driver level, which is why it's safer to do it with games that have anti-cheat. That being said, this has generally been safe with games that have anti-cheat, but some will look for specific files to be present and if the file size differs at all for the nvidia dlss files it may flag that as modification to the game so that's a big reason why inspector is safer to use especially with games that have anti-cheat but anyway we're going to use dlss swapper to swap the latest dlss files into games if you don't want to use dlss swapper you can go to, of course go ahead and download the dlss files manually and add them to the programs directory i've been doing that for years but for the sake of the video and people saying just use DLSS Swapper over and over. I'm going to use DLSS Swapper. 
it's also a lot easier to be honest. It's a pretty nice, it's a pretty nice program. All right, so the first game we're gonna test here is a set of course at Evo. This is an early access game, so it's brand new. It's running DLSS version 3.7.20. So let's go ahead and replace that with the latest. So I've gone ahead and swapped that. We're gonna go ahead and launch it in Steam. Again, the latest version is preset K as of the time that I'm recording this video. And as we can see on the bottom left here, it is running preset C. So right away with just a DLSS file swap, as you can see here, hopefully behind this quit sign, the, the overlay is a little bit weird, but it's running DLSS V3, which is normal for DLSS4, version 310.2.1, which is the latest DLSS version that we swapped into the game. However, the render preset is still C. So DLSS swapper, it was not useful enforcing the latest preset in the set of course of Evo. It's still defaulted to preset C when the latest preset is preset K. So for each game I test, I'm gonna revert the DLSS file back to what it was originally. This way, when we go ahead and test NVIDIA Inspector, the DLSS files for each game will be untouched. Next up, we'll test Crime Boss Rock K City. This is currently running DLSS version 3.7, so I'm gonna swap that to the latest. All right, so here we are in Crime Boss Rock K City. Finally, I had some resolution issues because again, I changed to 1440p for the sake of the video. And this is actually running preset K on the bottom left there, hopefully is legible. It's running preset K. So with just the DLSS file swap, Crime Boss Rock A City is good to go. So again, just swapping DLL files in some games is going to work, and in some games it's not going to work. We're going to try Delta Force, which is a pretty popular shooter right now, and it does have an anti-cheat. It's a pretty aggressive anti-cheat. It works on a kernel level, which most anti-cheats do these days because cheats work on kernel levels, and that's really the only way to combat them from what I understand. All right, so here we are in Delta Force. I had to reinstall shaders, of course, because of the new drivers. And as you can see on the bottom left here, it is forcing preset C. So another game where swapping just the DLSS file does not work. We'll go ahead and note that in our text file here. Let's go ahead and put that back to what it was. And what's cool about DLSS Swapper is it knows the original version of the DLSS file that was in the folder. So you don't have to figure that out. That's really useful about this program. All right, so let's swap the DLSS file for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth to the latest. Go ahead and launch it. So now it's actually defaulting to preset K. So something changed and it's working. So for DLSS Swapper, this actually works. Again, we'll go ahead and put it back so that we can test it properly with Inspector later. All right, so the next game we're gonna test is Path of Exile 2. So let's go ahead and replace that DLSS file. And for Path of Exile 2, as we can see on the bottom left, it is running preset K, so just the DLSS file swap does work with Path of Exile 2. Next one we're going to take a look at is PGA Tour 2K25 First Look. Let's go ahead and replace that file. For this game, preset K is being forced as well. So it does work with just a DLSS file swap. Next we're going to try Tokyo Extreme Racer, so we'll go ahead and swap the file in. 3 10.2.1. Again, we're not going to mess with frame generation for this video. And it's difficult to see, but it is using render preset K there on the bottom left. Please just take my word for it. All right, so let's revert that file as we've been doing. Next up, we're going to test Warframe. So let's swap that file in and load up the game. All right, so here we are in Warframe with the LSS enabled, and it is defaulting to preset E. So Warframe is a game that will not default to preset K with just a DLSS file swap. Let's go back into DLSS Swapper and reset it. I'm actually going to go backwards here. I'm going to go back up to Overwatch 2 and replace that file, and we'll test Overwatch 2. So again, it may be a little bit difficult to see, but in Overwatch 2, it is defaulting to render preset K with just the DLSS file swap. Let's go ahead and revert that back to default. All right, so let's go ahead and test Microsoft Simulator 2024. Replace the file with the latest one, and we'll go ahead and run it via the Xbox app. So as we can see on the bottom left, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 also defaults the latest preset K with just a DLSS file swap. All right, so that's 10 games tested, and three out of those 10 games did not default to the latest preset. That's 70%, which to some people may be good, to some people may not be good, but there is definitely some uncertainty there regarding this method working for all games. It clearly doesn't. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna enable this globally in NVIDIA Inspector. 
So this is on a driver level. You're not replacing any DLSS DLL files in games, which should theoretically be safer for games that utilize anti-cheat because you're not messing with the game's files. This is also kind of a set it and forget it setting. So you could just set it once instead of going to each game and replacing the DLSS files. So let's go ahead and apply these changes. I'm only going to apply for upscaling, not frame generation or ray reconstruction. So I set the latest preset to always use latest and I've enabled the override. So now we can close out of Inspector and we'll try these games again. I'm not sure if it's necessary to try every single game because a lot of them worked. Seven out of 10 worked. So let's try the ones that did not work. We'll start with Assetto Corsa Evo. So here we are in the main menu and on the bottom left there, you can see that it, it is now running render preset K. So via Inspector, it did work to force the latest preset, whereas replacing just the DLSS file to the latest version did not. Next up, we'll try Delta Force. Again, this is a game with anti-cheat, but replacing the file earlier did not trigger anything initially, which is good. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, whether I cut it out or not, I haven't personally had any issues replacing DLSS files in games with anti-cheat. All right, so here we are in Delta Force. And as you can see on the bottom left, it is running preset K now via the NVIDIA inspector method. Whereas with just the DLSS file swap, it was running preset C. Let's go ahead and try Warframe now, which was running preset E with just the DLSS file swap. So back in Warframe, just enable DLSS. And as you can see on the bottom left there, we are running preset K. So the inspector method also worked for Warframe. So that actually fixed the three games that did not work with just the DLSS file swap. So it seems to be more consistent to use NVIDIA inspector. Just for good measure, I am going to go ahead and run a couple of these other games. So we'll start with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We'll run that. Again, we're on the older versions of the DLSS files, the original versions that the game ship with, which for the most part is like 3.7.10. And this is also running preset K, which is nice. Let's try Tokyo Extreme Racer. So here we are in Tokyo Extreme Racer. This time I loaded into the actual game and disabled the mini map. So it should be easier to see on the bottom left that... It is running render preset K, so it works for this game as well. So I think that's pretty conclusive. That's 10 games tested. Three of the 10 did not default to the latest preset with just the DLL file swap. Using the DLSS swapper method is really nice to do things on a per game basis. That said, you can add specific game profiles to Inspector as well. But I think enabling it globally, if you always want to run the latest preset, is... The better way to go, especially considering that it's a bit more consistent, at least from my testing, with actually forcing the latest preset. Again, this is just 10 random games, but you can imagine, had I tested 100 games, since we got 70% success rate, maybe 30 of those games may not have worked with the latest preset. When you're dealing with workarounds, you have to expect that things may or may not work properly. I think the inspector workaround is the better way to go if you want to force the latest preset. The NVIDIA app proved to be completely worthless at the moment. Hopefully in the future, we can just add any game in our library to it and change its settings that way. The functionality is clearly there since we're doing it via Inspector and DLSS Swapper. So there don't seem to be any technical limitations as to why NVIDIA wouldn't allow that. So that's it. I can go on and test dozens of games, but I've already been here for a couple of hours and I think 10 games is a good start. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. I'm not asking for comments. I just enjoy the discussion. I like to help people out and it's really nice when I learn something new from my videos as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.